Let's talk about one of the very first <laughs> craziest scenarios, most sadistic scenarios I've ever read in the Bible. I think I was three years old when I was reading this. My father would make me do book reports on the Bible when I was a kid. I came across Genesis 22, where God is speaking to Abraham, and he wants to test Abraham. And this is what he does. He says, <clears throat> sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. So Abraham speaking to God now. They got an open conversation, right? They're having a communication back and forth, two-way conversation. This is, to me, let me start right there, because to me, this also, to me, dictates the fact that they are having a personal relationship, but not spiritual. I believe that this entity he's talking to is a person that he thinks is a God. I don't think he's talking to some mystical, invisible figure. I think he's talking to a person that's right, right there. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. And go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Can you imagine that? This person who you worship in and thinking is the almighty creator and the almighty creator of the heavens and earth and the universe and, and is all knowing and all love and everything else. And now this person who he calls a he, by the way, because I don't believe he, they don't, God has no gender, but there's a he all of a sudden. He's telling this guy. I want you to take your firstborn son and I want you to kill him in my name's sake. That's what he's telling him. So early the next morning, Abraham got up and sadly saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, this man is following through on this craziness. Tell me this ain't sadistic on both sides. He set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I, while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. So he's lying now. Now he's telling a lie. He's trying to tell his servants, man, we're just going to go over here and pray for a minute and come right back. He ain't doing that. He's getting ready to go for his own son in the namesake of this fake God. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. So now he's in putting the wood on his son. And he himself carried the fire and the knife as two of them went together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father. Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where's the lamb for the burnt offering? He don't even know he's about to get by his own dad. He doesn't even know his dad has taken him up there to kill him in the name of his God with the lowercase g. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Again, he's lying again. You providing the doggone lamb, I, uh, uh, Abraham. You're providing the lamb. Nobody's forcing you. Nobody's got a gun to your head to do this. Nobody's got a, a back then a, a bow or an arrow or a spear <laughs> pointed at your skull or your heart. Nobody's making you do this. You're doing this because you want favor with the Lord and all this other kind of craziness. When they reached the place that God had told them about, Abraham built an altar and he arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to lay his son. This is under the orders of God now. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything. Now I know you fear God. <laughs> Man, listen. If that kind of stuff doesn't get you pissed off, then you don't understand what's going on here. If you think that that's love, if you think that fear means love, then you don't have no idea what love really is. If you think that the all knowing and all loving God, he good all the time is uh, he is he what he as he was, he is now and forever will forever be. The preacher will tell you. Right. That means he's the same entity right now, then. The one that told this dude to go up on the mountaintop with his own kid, his only son, his firstborn, and he loved so much, this guy bounds his son and pulls out the knife and gets ready to slash his own kid in the name of God. Why? You think he did this because he wants to be, uh, show God how faithful he is? 
he did it because he doesn't want the wrath of God. You see, that's why God said, now I know you fear me. That is very sadistic and very evil. Very evil. That's an evil thing to do. That's evil. And so you, you lie a few times to your people. You're lying to your kid. Then you strap your kid down. He's traumatized for life. He's literally, that kid is traumatized for the rest of his life. Your own father straps you down to an altar, doesn't even warn you or tell you anything about this, and he gets ready to cut your throat, and all in the name of this fake God. And then God goes, oh, no, I was just, I was just kidding, man. I would test you out. See how, you, see where your mind was. See if you really was fearing me. That's evil. And if you think that's love, then you have no idea what love really is. You see what this God of the Bible pray, pray, does, he prays on fear. He prays on fear. And I do mean a he. When I, now I'm going to call it a he because the God of the Bible are men. They're, they're actual flesh and blood people. They're not, it's not in the creator of any universe at all. And so he's praying on the fear. He's using fear tactics to win people over. And these people, they don't understand that the powers that he has are just high levels of technology and wisdom that he can wield over them. So they're thinking, man, if I don't do this, this guy's going to kill me in the whole city. I got to go kill my son now or, we gonna, or I'm going to face the wrath of God. So instead of saying, you know what, God, no, take me or I'll kill myself on the burnt offering. He goes, yeah, I'm going to wrap my son up and tie him down and I'm going to go ahead and kill him. This is the mindset of these people. It's a psychosis. This whole religion thing is a this dogma is a complete psychosis. And there's people out here just to this very day that will kill you over a religious belief. More people have died on this planet over religious belief than any other reason on the planet. More people have died on this planet in wars because of religious beliefs more than any other reason. Think about that. By Compendium of the Emerald Tablets by Billy Carson.